Um, and also, you know, this FDA thing, this government regulating agency saying what is okay and what's not okay. I mean, they okayed Vioxx, which of course had to be taken off the market for killing a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that right after they decided that, yes, indeed, glyphosate could be a possible carcinogen, the FDA went ahead and improved Dow Syngenta's version of the exact yeah. same thing with the Roundup Ready crops. So this is the governmental regulating agency that, of course, should be in control. And, of course, they have to maintain that marijuana has absolutely no legal use, prohibit any studies that would show that it does, because that would mean that it's not a Schedule One drug. They want to maintain that. It's interesting that this article that I'm looking at here, summarizing the uh, CBS 60 Minutes program, it's on ATTN.com. One of the things they have here, related uh, article, marijuana could literally replace these five prescription drugs. Yeah, a lot more than that, but we're not allowed to know that. And I think a lot of what right. they're doing is really a face-saving effort to try to say, all right, we're going to liberalize things a little bit because they can be shut down mm -hmm. at the state level. We've seen it now with three states shutting them down. They don't want that genie to get out of the bottle. Wow. Well, that's incredibly interesting. I know you're going to be actually breaking this down even more uh, tomorrow during the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. So be sure to tune in to that for this more explosive information. David Knight, thank you so much. Thank you. Stick around. We'll be right back with more InfoWars news. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash, you're gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, it's that time of year again when everybody is rushing out to do all of their last minute holiday shopping. And of course, this is also the perfect time to protest if you're part of the Black Lives Matter movement. And that is why the nation's largest mall, the Mall of America, is actually requesting a county judge bar Black Lives Matter from holding a demonstration inside the mall tomorrow. Uh, this is lawyers for the for the Mall of America have asked for a restraining order banning demonstrators from the private property. Any demonstrators defying that order will be arrested and a letter um, was sent to protest leaders informing them of this action. So now they're basically saying this is a widely publicized event. They want it taken down off of Black Lives Matter's Facebook page. They say it's an unlawful demonstration that is set to take place on private property. Now leaders of the movement are saying that this mall's ban is a restriction on their free speech, despite the fact, of course, that it's private property. And their argument is that the Mall of America is public property because the company who built it received tax breaks and other public subsidies when it was constructed. 
So, of course, that's a very interesting argument. But, of course, the Supreme Court ruled against that, specifically using the Mall of America as an example about 20 years ago. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with that movement tomorrow. Now, Quartz is actually putting out an article talking about social movements uh, actually being the end to war as we know it, talking about how governments might be replacing conventional warfare with social movements. Um, they're citing President Obama's refusal to send boots on the ground to fight Islamic State in Syria, saying uh, that the old methods of re regime change are being rendered obsolete. Going forward, governments will increasingly rely on catalyzing contagious social protests to topple terrorist states and influence autocratic regimes. And they go on to point out how it's actually the Russian military who are the first to openly be discussing this shift in the art of war. Uh, they're saying that, you know, Russia believes that this is a, a new, so the social movements are a new US and European approach to warfare that focuses on creating destabilizing revolutions in other states as a means of serving their security interests at low cost and with minimal casualties. Now, of course, we've seen similar accusations of this um, engineering of protests, of course, with the George Soros Foundation funding Black Lives Matter movements um, with his Open Society Foundation. We've seen evidence of that in the Ukraine as well uh, with the Open Society Foundation, uh, Gene Sharp's Albert Einstein Institute and the Serbia based Center for Applied Nonviolent Action and Strategies. So they're arguing that a turn towards social movement warfare could be a strategic response to the impracticality of direct confrontation and that this could be sort of the new uh, the new tool there with uh, with warfare and of course we have seen these engineered protests in the Arab Spring and Kurt Nimmo reported about this uh, earlier this week um, when Clinton was actually lying about Syria during the Democratic debate and he pointed out how preparations for the Arab Spring began not as unrest but it was prepared years before uh, in seminar rooms in DC and New York and US funding funded training facilities in Serbia and camps that were held in neighboring countries. And the AFP reported in 2011 how the State Department under Hillary Clinton sponsored efforts to help activists in Arab and other countries gain access to technology that would circumvent government firewalls, secure telephone text and voice messages, and prevent attacks on websites. And uh, Michael Posner, who's the Assistant Secretary of State for Human Rights and Labor, actually told reporters about how they were spending like $50 million assisting activists, helping to build this technology uh, that would help them circumvent the government and help assist them so that they, if they were arrested, um, or being attacked by an authoritarian regime, they could hit a sort of panic button on their phone that would immediately erase all of their contacts in the phone as well. So you see that uh, encryption is very important when you're trying to overthrow somebody else's government. So we have seen how these social movements have been engineered to fit into toppling certain regimes. So, and this is also, of course, what we're seeing in Syria. Now, Clinton, during these debates, she said that Syria is exactly where it needs to be, the situation in Syria. And, um, you know, I beg to differ. So we're talking about these so-called moderate rebels uh, uh, rising up against Assad. And the president's policy is that Assad must leave office and that the moderate rebels in Syria have to be armed in order to defeat him. Well, now we're going to take a look at Pulitzer Prize winning author Seymour Hirsch's expose on the military's resistance to the president's policy. Uh, they don't want to fund Syrian moderate rebels. And they also say that this is just a figment of the administration's imagination. Cy Hirsch has revealed in his latest offering titled Military to Military that while Obama continued his campaign of lies regarding President Bashar al-Assad's tenuous hold on power, the Joint Chiefs of Staff were altering the playing field with shared intelligence. Pulitzer Prize winner Hirsch has broken new ground once again, divulging a quiet alliance between Germany, Israel, and Russia of shared tactical intelligence in order to freeze the advance of al-Nusra and ISIS in the fall of 2013. Do I think that uh, our actions in any way violate the War Powers Resolution? The answer is no. 
President Obama and then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's failed foreign policy aimed at toppling Gaddafi's Libya and Morsi's Egypt resulted in a power vacuum immediately filled with Islamic fundamental extremism. Obama's constant demand that Assad must go chaotically echoed the previous coups and if accomplished could give the Islamic State the upper hand in the region. Do you know any major Arab ally that embraces ISIL? I know major Arab allies who fund them. General Dempsey and the Joint Chiefs of Staff decided that Obama's meddling in the Middle East had to be countered. The Joint Chiefs of Staff quietly shared intelligence with key allies in order to give Syria the tactical advantage. However, Syria had to agree to these four terms. Cy Hirsch writes, first, Assad must keep Hezbollah from attacking Israel. Second, he must renew negotiations with Israel on the Golan Heights. Third, he must accept Russian and other outside military advisors. And fourth, he must commit to holding open elections after the war with a wide range of factions. Assad essentially agreed to these conditions over time, and that led to major shifts in the war that are generally now known to the public. Meanwhile, the Obama administration was touting the narrative that an anti-Islamic state coalition with Russia would prove to be impossible and non-beneficial. However, by allying with Russian military, General Dempsey and the Joint Chiefs of Staff proved that not only was a coalition possible, the shared knowledge of the Islamic State between Russia and the United States would serve to weaken their advance into Syria. Russia had been fighting Islamic State leaders in the two Chechen wars that began in 1994, and they were very familiar with the ISIS leadership, while the U.S. had been training foreign fighters for years. This experience and a long-standing tradition applying target information with massive sums of money would prove to be devastating to ISIS's leadership. And as the coalition quietly made progress, it became abundantly clear that the so-called Syrian moderate rebels Obama kept referring to were more of a fantasy than a reality. To this day, retired General Dempsey is perplexed by Obama's bold-faced lie that Turkey's Erdogan is a staunch ally with the United States in the fight against the Islamic State. Cy Hirsch writes, Dempsey and his associates remained mystified by Obama's continued public defense of Erdogan, given the American intelligence community's strong case against him and the evidence that Obama in private accepts that case. Hirsch wrote last spring, Obama said to Turkey's intelligence chief, we know what you're doing with the radicals in Syria. After Dempsey retired in September, General Dunford and an entirely new and obedient staff was installed to back up all of Obama's lies, as is evident by their communal hatred of Donald Trump. Cy Hirsch has presented nothing less than another testament to Obama's pitiful leadership of the U.S. military, built upon a pile of half-baked falsehoods, now proven with out a shadow of a doubt to be treasonous support for the Islamic State. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, that's it for the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button. And you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. Your subscription there will get you instant access to over 18 years worth of content that you will not find on YouTube. And right now, you can get your subscription for half the price. You can also share this subscription, your password, with up to 20 people at the same time. So there you go. And of course, it helps this operation. Well, we will see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. 
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.